Have you ever thought of building your own radio station? Then you'll need one of these, one of these, one of these, and one of these. Let's have a closer look at what is needed to build your own radio station. This is the short version of this video. For a longer, more in-depth look, be sure to subscribe to be notified when it's ready to watch. There are three basic parts to a radio station, which are the studio, the link, and the transmitter. In the studio, you'll find the mixer or mixing board, sometimes called a mixing desk. This is an older analog version, but it helps to understand the basic principles. On other studio mixers, you will find a range of additional adjustments, but on a radio station mixer, there's really only an on-off button for each channel, a fader for the volume of that channel, and a trigger button. Even though you can run a radio station directly from a computer or even a laptop, using a mixer is so much easier and allows you to focus on your speaking and mixing without having to find the mouse on the screen. Connected to the mixer is all the studio microphones and the audio sources, which are mostly computers these days, but sometimes you'll still find other audio inputs like CD players in older and smaller radio stations. Most modern commercial stations work entirely off computers and servers, but they still work through a mixer, which is normally a digital desk with digital inputs and outputs. On the studio side is where most of the equipment is, but it's not the part that gets the radio signal out. For that, you'll need a radio transmitter. This can range in power from as low as 100 milliwatts to tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands of watts. If you're looking to build a radio station for the first time, you're probably looking at 100 milliwatts for an unlicensed station and between 1 watt and a few hundred watts for a small commercial or community radio station. If your country has migrated to digital, your signal may be distributed differently as multiple signals can run on one digital transmitter through what is called DAB, DAB Plus or Digital Audio Broadcasting, whereas analog transmitters can only carry one station or one signal. Then to send the audio signal from the studio to the transmitter, you need a radio link. That can be an analog or digital radio link, or if you are not able to see your high sight from your studio, an internet connection like a fiber line can be used. There are dedicated signal carriers for this, or you can use your own signal sent via your modem. Other important pieces of equipment are the brick wall limiter, which helps to stop the audio signal distorting or overmodulating on the transmitter. These are mostly used for radio links. Most digital audio limiting is done digitally and not with an external piece of equipment. Also, in the studio, you need processing for the microphone to make you sound like a big station. This is where equipment like this come in. This is the DBX286S, which are more difficult to find these days. I will provide a link in the description whenever I find one available. They are great for radio stations and online streaming radio stations. They also work great for podcasts and voiceovers in studios. If you are running an analog transmitter, you will need a tower and an antenna. If your country is already completely digital, chances are that you will only be able to send your studio audio signal to a signal distributor who will put your signal on one of their digital transmitters. Then in your studio, you'll have your radio automation software. And in another video, I'll give a full breakdown on how to set up your audio software. The best automation software to get for completely free if you are starting a new station or you are new to radio broadcasting, even if you are just wanting to be a presenter and need your own software, try out Radio DJ. It's completely free and there's a link in the description so you can download that and start using it. You can use it for an FM broadcast station or an online streaming station. Then depending on your country, you will also need a broadcast license and a music distribution license, which we'll talk about more in another video. To learn more about radio stations and radio automation software, check out this video.